Peace and blessings, Israel. May the most high in the name of Christ bless you all. My name is Brother Aram of the Boston Church, located in the Boston region. And Lord willing, tonight we're going to continue on the topic, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Okay, it was a statement made in Romans, the ninth chapter. So that'll be our first scripture. But again, they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. What did Paul mean when he was making that statement? What was the true context of that? Um, but let's begin with a prayer. All praises. So, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. All praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you. Amen. All right, Israel. So let's head right to Romans 9. And we're just continuing on from where we left off. But I always like to reiterate and then... Once we do that, then we can move on to the next uh, scriptures. Let's backtrack a little bit. So let's head back to where the original statement was made. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. It's a scripture that's used a lot by brothers who identify as Israelites. Now, that's a good thing. But where does it become sin? Where does it become a bad thing when we make it about nationality? Right? Because the way this works, it has to be where we're saved by grace being an Israelite, right? But the way it's being promoted a lot of times, and for those that may not know, you know, the so-called blacks and the so-called Hispanics, we're just, that's just two names of this great nation, the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? And so... We've been conditioned to be called slave names. We were oppressed as a people, still being oppressed. So you have to understand what draws our people to the fact that we we have you know we're something greater. Here's the problem though. Before we lost our identity and before we were oppressed as a people, we knew who we were. We spake the original Hebrew. We wore a fringe and blue border. We were in our homeland, not in a storefront church in our enemy's land. Or in strange lands. We knew, we knew. So if just being an Israelite by nation was good enough, how do we end up in the conditions that we are in? Well, it's a simple answer. God's people rejected him. They rejected the Messiah that he sent that was supposed to show us the way of the Father, right? Like when you go to um, John 1, I know I said Romans 9, but head to John, the first chapter. Okay. Now, mind you, in everything we're saying, the Bible is an Israelite book. Okay, so let's not make any mistake like, you know, we're talking about all nations. No, no. The Bible is an Israelite book. We are the Israelites, but Israel is a nation, not a religion. And what has happened is the spirit of the Pharisees who were Israelites by nation, that spirit has not died out. That spirit has passed on through wicked Israelites, through false leaders and false prophets. And it's not by coincidence that even though they've never met Caiaphas, who was a Pharisee recorded in Scripture, they never met Gamaliel or the rest of these other wicked elders who were Pharisees and Sadducees. Not all of them were wicked, but I'm naming the ones that the Bible recorded that rejected the Christ. Even though these present brothers who deem themselves Israelites, Never met these guys of the past. They act exactly like them. You want to know why? Because Christ warned the children of Israel, beware the leaven of the Pharisees. What was the leaven of the Pharisees? 
hypocrisy, false doctrine, self-entitlement and self-righteousness, falsehood, projection and narcissistic behavior. You doing this, you doing that, you doing this, you and that, you doing that when they're describing themselves. This is what Paul was getting at because remember, Paul should know because he was formerly of the circumcision. And it took for the Christ to knock him off his horse literally. In Acts, the uh, ninth chapter, you get the story. And then I think it, I say, I want to say it's repeated in Acts 22 when Paul gives account of the same event. So Paul should know he was a Pharisee. He understood now that Christ showed him the light. Man, I was in falsehood. I was in darkness. I thought I was doing the right thing. Right? Okay. So John 1. And you read about how Christ came to the children of Israel. Right? We'll read from the 10th verse. We had John the first chapter 10 verse. It says, he was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. So now it's it's kind of personifying that we're no longer talking about the planet, but we're actually talking about the children of Israel. Right? The children of Israel is personifying this word world. Right? And so Christ was amongst his people. And they didn't see him as the Messiah, just as Isaiah 53 prophesied and so on. Just as David in the Psalms prophesied, where he said, I am a worm and despised amongst men. So it was prophesied that the children of Israel would disrespect, not acknowledge, and eventually kill their own Messiah. So here another prophet named John is prophesying when it actually happened. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So John lived in the time when the Christ showed up, as opposed to Isaiah or David prophesying it about it aforetime. John lived it and saw it, and Israel rejected the Messiah. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. That ain't talking about all Israel, because read the next verse. So the ones that rejected the Christ was the scribes and Pharisees, the wicked elders and leaders of Israel. And they boasted in the law and they boasted in being Israel. They were very, very proud, and very, very obnoxious, very condescending. Sound familiar? But as many as received him, so but as many as Israel that received the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Right, we say Yahweh Shai, right? And in the Numbers, the twelfth chapter, it'll say Yahashua. Right, when you get the name of Joshua, Moses's uh, understudy, that's the same name Christ carried, Yahashua, the Savior. So it says, but as many as received him amongst Israel, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name, which were born, when they say believe on his name, in his power and authority that it is he who is Israel's Lord and Messiah. That's what it means, name, not the pronunciation. That's, we got to be smarter than that. Believing on his name is talking about who he, what he represents. He's the son of the Most High, the son of the living God. He is the Most High's anointed, right? And that knowledge wasn't in everyone. So the only ones that received him as the son of God, they themselves became the sons of God, right? The distinction is Christ is the only true begotten son of the most high. He has all power and authority, but there's room left that the elect of Israel are the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. In other words, nothing physical or tangible caused them to see the Christ for what he was, right? It was the most high, but of God that opened up the eyes of these brothers and sisters 
to see Christ for who he was. And that's how they believed on him. You understand? So now when you go to um, Matthew 3, which is a scripture we read last week concerning they are not all Israel which are of Israel. John had to contend with the same type of pharisaical spirit where you're making it about nationality. Why? Because this is what a carnal person does. They only hear what they want to hear. So as much as the Bible is an Israelite book, as much as the promises and prophecies belong to Israel, and that's what Roman 9, Romans 9 going to say, they miss the whole point. If you don't believe in the Messiah and receive him as the son of God, being Israel means nothing. You can be disallowed of the covenant. And that's what's Paul's point. So we had in the Matthew 3 to reiterate a, a former point we made last week. But let's read it again. I want to get to the point. So it speaks about John. Let's at least identify the scenario here. We in Matthew, the third chapter. Let's get a name. In those days came who? John the Baptist. Preaching in the wilderness of where? Judea. Right? And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That is the main teaching for the Israelites. You wouldn't know because they're teaching all kind of uh, idolatries. Promotion of men, promotion of the, the leaders of their group. Reincarnation, when the scriptures never spake of reincarnation, it spoke of Christ and the resurrection. So repentance is the main teaching because it's the reason why Israel went astray. We needed to repent, right? In other words, it's, it's, it's in response to the solution to heal the nation. We went astray as a people. So what do you think? The main teaching going to be repentance, right? And so as John is preaching and baptizing in water, Let's jump to the sixth verse, Matthew 3 and 6, and where it says, well, fifth verse, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all region round about Jordan. So these are Israelites, let's be clear. And were baptized of him, meaning John, in Jordan, confessing their sins. So that's part of the ministry. You got Israelite groups who curse themselves and condemn themselves by rejecting the water baptism. If they understood what was said in Malachi, the third chapter, they would realize that both messengers in Malachi, the third chapter, both messengers were meant to baptize in water. Even though Christ baptized not in water, he had his disciples baptized in water. But both messengers, whether John the Baptist being the forerunner to Christ or the Christ himself, whose ministry was, was to follow after John, both ministries included water baptism with the promotion of repentance first. This is why they got in the water and did what? They didn't do, get in the water and just do backstrokes. They were baptized of him in the Jordan River. Doing what, though? Repenting, like he said in the second verse, confessing their sins because it was an outward ritual of something greater. The old man is to be buried, buried and the new man in Christ is to come walking out of water in newness of life. It's a commandment of the Christ, right? And so, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, so this, this is what's bringing it home when it said he came to his own and his own received him not. You would think the guys that had the Bible, the leaders of Israel, would be the first ones repenting and getting baptized. What happened? They were the ones rejecting the Lord's baptism, right? Or, yeah, the Lord's baptism. So uh, I'll read this. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. 
So he called them vipers. That's uh, synonymous with a poisonous snake, meaning if you was to follow their philosophies, you might as well be dead. Sound familiar? By following these groups of organizations that are, that is promoted by man, not of God, you might as well be dead. That's all they do is make sure they promote their so-called leader. And he decides what he wants to be called. If he wants to be called minister, or if he wants to be called apostle, or if he wants to be called bishop, if he wants to be called officer, or captain, or general. You got generals in Israel. You, It's amazing. When truth be told, according to the Holy Scriptures, there's only one leader of Israel. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And there's only one name that he gave us. The children of Israel. So all these acronym names is a is a uh, how should we say a byproduct of what's the group what the group is about promotion of man. You are never going to read these acronym groups in the book of Acts. And that's why we always ask this question: What camp was Peter from? What camp was James and John and Paul and them from? They weren't part of no camp. That's a thing to. Similar, similar to how Willie Lynch described it amongst the slaves in the South and in the Caribbean. Let them ha have pride in their own divisions. If they're from the east side of town, let them have pride so they can go against the west side of town. If they're from the north, let them have pride in that so they can go and have pride against their brothers in the South. Here's the funny thing. The whole crew is on the plantation. So Willie Lynch knew about divide and conquer. And so <laughs> he was a southern, uh, he was a former, well, he was a former, but he was a slave owner that made his name and given seminars and, and writing out essays. According to Judge Joe Brown, uh, he had to read a lot of essays. There was a lot of essays and a lot of letters that were written. Um, wasn't just one letter. And so Judge Joe Brown, when he was becoming a lawyer, he told the story how that was part of uh, his curriculum. We had to read those things over, right? And Willie Lynch was, was given the game on how to keep black folk, so-called black, right? Because we don't want to be deemed by that name. It has all kinds of negative connotations. Black meaning dark and evil and uh, untrustworthy and um, hateful and so when they gave us that name and different versions of it, Negro means black, nigger means black. That was the Southern uh, Caucasian who couldn't say niger in the Latin, so he'd say nigger. So it all means black. So I find it funny. It's don't say the N-word, but then they're calling you black. They're saying Black History Month, nigger month, niger month, negro month. In Spanish, negro. It's all the same. They meant it as a status, knowing that we weren't black the color. We're brown, different shades of brown. So the same enemy that tell you and, and put these connotations on our people, then they got our people arguing over the level of the, the context of the connotation. Some people, you know, take pride in being called something negative, black. And they talk about blackness. No, oh, what was your name before your enemy named you black? Oh, by the way, naming himself white, pure, uh, new snow. When you look it up, you, you'd be amazed at how he's describing himself. And if you really dig deep, you'll find out that black and white didn't show up until the Virginia colony uh, in the 1600s when they decided to make a division and institute the, the system of slavery and make the uh, poor Caucasian Europeans coming out of Europe, make them feel some kind of status because they were going to be the uh, the taskmasters to keep us in line while the rich folks back in the uh, old countries, right, back in England and back in France and back in Spain, they're going to collect the money while the, the criminals that was in Europe got sent over here to be over us, and all of a sudden they became slave owners with mansions and everything. These are criminals. They were criminals in the streets of London and everything else, everywhere else. 
But the government, the, the British Crown, sent the hard criminals to Australia and sent the medium-level criminals to the 13 colonies. So don't tell me about black and white. All right, so moving on. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. So they was acting like they, there was no wrath coming. But John was bold in the spirit and said, y'all need to be warned to re what? bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. See, you too got to repent. Right. But they were. And this is the same pharisaical spirit. Repent of what? I'm an Israelite. I keep the law, statutes, commandments. Right. Christ told us the parable of the, the the Pharisee and the publican. The Pharisee was self-righteous. I fast twice a week. I pay my tithes. I do this. I do that. I'm not like this publican here. Right? Well, the publican wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven. He cried out and was repenting. And Christ said, who went home more righteous? They said, the publican. Well, there you go. So the publicans were despised by Israelites because they felt they were sellouts. Publicans were Israelite tax collectors for the Romans, and they would do Israel wrong. They would exact more money than they should and take extra taxes and, 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 and pocket it for themselves, right? So Israel didn't like them guys, but the publican was repenting while the guy who was supposedly born in the, in the law was self-righteous, and that was the spirit on these guys, and that's the spirit on a lot of brothers today where they promote their false leaders and their false dogma, doctrines, more than defending the Christ. And got a nerve to have Christ in their names in some of the label of these groups. What Christ is this? So what did John say? And think not to say within yourself. So what's part of holding them up from repenting? Look, look at the wording. Think not to say within yourselves, man. Get it out your mind. We have Abraham to our father, meaning we identify that we are the sons and daughters of Abraham. We are Israelites. We got a, a, a automatic ticket to the kingdom based on nationality. And you'll see that problem is indicative amongst the brothers today. It's so bad that a brother feels that because he's an Israelite, I mean, I, I can go so many directions with my next statement, but I'll pick one. Because he's born an Israelite, he don't have to teach his wife. And you say, that doesn't make sense. Well, how would you draw that connection? I don't. But this is what the brothers are doing. They feel they're Israel. And they look at their wives as, as like a whole subdivision. Like she's just, oh, she's Eve. Right? They look at women like dirt, a lot of these groups. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So if you really paid attention to them, then who are these righteous? It would just be all the men. The sisters are dogs, and uh, who cares about the kids? You see? It's, it's, to me, it's, it's highly indicative. It's, it's just, uh, how should I say, the backwards dysfunction of what goes on in our community, it just got an Israelite taste to it. You're still being a dysfunctional, low-down, dirty pimp or dog. That that that's uh, how they say uh, a deadbeat dad, an abusive uh, husband, but with an Israelite spin. And this is what they come with, and they be tricking sisters. And a lot of these sisters are not blameless. They be down with it because they lusting, and so they take advantage of a lot of these vulnerable sisters. The sister don't know a lick of, of scripture and they coming together and, oh, you my wife. H how's she your wife? You don't even understand what marriage is. That's not marriage. And they got false doctrines. If you lay with a woman, she's automatically your wife. Oh, yeah, well, why did John the Baptist tell Herod, you laying with your brother's wife? Okay, that woman Herodias that's your brother Philip's wife. You can't lay with her. Herod could have told John, well, according to your law, 
All I got to do is just lay with her and give the father 50 shekels. See, it, it, they, so their approach to the law be uh, satanic because a lot of the laws they reading speaks of ver against the very things they promoting. Okay, you could, sex doesn't constitute any marriage because then we wouldn't have we would have nine commandments rather than ten. Thou shalt not commit adultery wouldn't exist. So they full of foolishness. Now let's continue. So what was their problem? And John had to contend with this. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. I'm an Israelite. I got an automatic ticket to the kingdom. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You see? So the stones was prophetic of like something worthless, something uh, not appealing. And so John was actually prophesying of Christ's disciples. Y'all ain't going to do the job. Christ got a whole nother group. And Peter, James, John, and them, Andrew, they were fishermen. You know what I'm saying? Smell like fish all day. They weren't trying to be anybody's prophet and teacher and leader. But these guys were because they loved the greetings in the markets. They loved the, 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 the accolades. They love being called rabbi, right? They like the highest seats. They like being praised of men. All this is damnation, brother. And this same pharisaical spirit is on a lot of groups that call themselves Israelites. Now, I should know because I started and in, in, in heard about it in 89 and started with a particular group out of Harlem in 90. Now, I'm originally from New York City, so I know my way around when it comes to that town. You understand? So, <laughs> the stories that, that's being told today, it's amazing how a lot of these brothers tell a story with convenient amnesia, a lot of slander, a lot of, uh, how should we say, misremembering. <laughs> And so we try, we definitely try our hardest not to get involved with a lot of that because that's ungodly. And we try to just promote the doctrine of Christ, which is the gospel. You're supposed to be an Israelite that is a disciple of Christ. Disciple of Christ means Christian. This is why Peter said, if any man suffer, now what was Peter's nationality? It definitely wasn't black. Okay, that status didn't show up till later on in the 13 colonies, starting with the Virginia colony. So every man went by their nation, their national origin, who their forefathers were. But Peter understood it. The Israelites are the Christians. So if we're going to catch any trouble or tribulation, let God get the glory and suffer as one who follows the Christ. So the Israelites are the Christians. When you have a certain these Israelite groups, they think it's the, there's a distinction there, right? And so they're, 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 they're associating uh, the so-called Europeans' false version of Christianity coming out of Roman Catholic Church, which now is under, under like a hybrid thing, like an octopus, Protestant, Lutheran, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah's Witness. So they're associating that as something evil, which it is, Right, a lot of those concepts, uh, evil in origin. Right, and our people do need re need to repent of those religions because the Bible is not the problem; it's the religions is the problem. But you got these brothers playing games and calling people Christians like that's a bad thing. When an Israelite who follows the Christ, we just read it in John, John the first chapter, they to become the sons of God. The Israelite is the Christian in the sense of the word. When you check out the two versions of it, what is an Israelite? What is a Christian? It's one and the same. It tell you Abraham believed and became the friend of God. Now in Genesis 14, it described Abram as Abram the Hebrew, but he was a follower of Christ, even though he didn't see the Christ in the flesh. It said Abraham believed the gospel. That's in Galatians, the third chapter. 
So he was a Christian before the Christ came in the flesh. So these brothers are, are just, they're unread, they're untaught, and they're being, you know, they, and, and so let's continue. So John had to, that's why we came here. John had to contend with this spirit from the Pharisees and Sadducees that just being of Abraham makes you somehow righteous where you don't have to repent. 10 verse. Well, I'll read 9 again. And so we in Matthew 3 and 9. And think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And that's what he did. The, the, the scriptures speak about the um, the stone which the builders rejected had become the head of the corner. So they rejected the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, meaning the anointed Savior. The Lord used his disciples to push the word, and that's what that whole book of Acts is about. You want to know what the doctrine is? Check how Peter and them taught in Acts 2. That's a summarized version of the whole Bible. Israelites coming from all over the world to be taught the truth of Christ. You don't never see Peter and them say, hey, we from such and such camp. Right? Or we or, or, or we were reincarnated from the past. You never hear that foolishness. You never hear them talking about getting women. Seven women, brother. You never see when people tried to bow to them, Peter says, see thou do it or not. When Cornelius tried to bow to Peter. Even the angels, which are mighty, the scriptures say that, that man was made lower than the angels. Man, angels are mightier than man. And in the book of Revelation, John tried to bow to one of the angels. The angel says, see thou do it, sit not, I'm your fellow servant. So people who have, a, 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 can be greater in stature, in righteousness, they ain't even promoting bowing down to them. But what are these guys promoting? Unless you parrot or echo the sentiments of whatever leader they got, you somehow ain't in the truth. Well, they in their own world. Let's read on. So think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So the good fruit is the repentance. That's what it is. It's not joining my group. Every tree that doesn't join my group, and then they're reading the scripture like it pertains to their group. This is a trick of the devil, where the devil is a trickster and a saboteur to have people read the very scriptures they're breaking. From the early 90s, I've heard these scriptures like as if they pertain to this to this Israelite group. No, it's talking about repentance in Christ or else. There is no new name you got. I-U-I-C, G-O-C-C, uh, H-O-D, uh, G-M-S, um, L-O-Z, all these names. It's out of order. So Romans 9, let's get it. Whoever doesn't repent, they to be hewn down and cast into the fire. That's talking about the second coming of Christ. Romans 9, going to back it up. Okay, so just being an Israelite is not good enough. This is what Christ told Nicodemus, but let's read Romans 9. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience, meaning Paul's conscience, his mind, also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Meaning what I'm about to say in this portion of the letter, this letter to the church at Rome, this synagogue at Rome, where Israel gathered for the Sabbaths, the Spirit is speaking through me in this portion. Well, in other words, he's emphasizing this is the Spirit speaking. Not to say the Spirit wasn't speaking through him through the rest of the letter, but let's, let's continue that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. See, it was never personal with Paul. He said, for I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ, meaning separated from the Messiah, for my brethren, meaning for the stead of his brethren. Now, when he's saying his brethren, he's being specific to a certain fraternity that he belonged to. He said, my kinsmen, according to the Flesh. Once he says according to the flesh, that goes with this scripture here, 1 Corinthians 
ten eighteen. We'll come back. But he's being specific, not necessarily to all Israel in this verse, but he's saying the former fraternity of circum the circumcision that Paul used to be part of. They're not seeing the light. They're not understanding the scriptures to promote Jesus Christ and Nazareth. So, Lord, let my true feeling is let me be blocked out so that they can come in. Right? And so his brethren, his kinsmen, according to the flesh, this flesh here in context is talking about according to outward works or the works of the law. That's what he means. And 1 Corinthians 10, 18 is a, is a good verse to kind of keep us in context. We'll come back. 1 Corinthians 10, 18. What does he mean, flesh? The Israelites according to the flesh. That's talking about the circumcision. Remember, we were divided by this time into different factions. You had Israelites that were circumcision, uncircumcision, bond, free, Scythian, barbarian, whatever. And we were scattered throughout that whole Eastern world. Right Now, some of us were already here in the Americas, but that's a whole nother class. Um, but we were scattered as a people nonetheless. So 1 Corinthians 10, 18 is going to give us definition of flesh. Okay, we in 1 Corinthians 10, 18. Behold Israel after the flesh. Now he got, he's going to tell us who they are. Are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? So that can't be talking about all Israel because not all Israel was at dealing in the sacrifices at the temple and, and dealing with the priests in the, in the first covenant, right? The Levitical priesthood. That was a certain portion of Israel deemed the circumcision. So behold Israel. Okay, so you got to know the context when Paul says Israel, not every time is he talking about the whole nation. He's being specific to this particular faction of Israel that was after the flesh, meaning outward works, the works of the law. Are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar? So his point in this verse was saying that when they were eating of the sacrifice, that made them one with the God of that altar, meaning the Most High. He's trying to make a point that be careful when you're eating the things of idols. It makes you one with that thing based on you eating of it. Right? So, but I came here to let you know, Israel after the flesh is said similar to Romans 9, is those that ate of the sacrifices uh, which partook of the altar. What altar? <laughs> the temple in Jerusalem. The circumcision. Okay, so going back, I mean, we didn't have to go there, but I just went there. I mean, the answer is in the bottom of Romans 9. We could have just stayed in Romans 9, but I chose to do that. All praises. And so back to Romans 9. He says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I, wish, I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So he's being specific to those who partook at uh, the sacrifices at, uh, to the altar, that joined them to the altar and so forth. That's talking about the Levitical priesthood and the circumcision. All right. And so then he says, who are Israelites? Which is without a shadow of a doubt. They sure enough would let you know. <laughs> so... In pointing out what belongs to the Israelites, he's actually making an indictment against them. That's the funny thing when our brothers pull this scripture on the street corners, he's making an indictment against them. Watch. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? That's Christ dying on the cross to adopt us back as the sons of God. And the glory, that's talking about the kingdom including the immortality that's to come with the kingdom, everlasting life. And the covenants, both the first and second covenant, belongs to Israel, not the whole world. And the giving of the law, because we were given the law going way back to Adam. Then in Israel's generations later on, Moses and all the prophets. And the service of God, because the Most High chose us to be the priests, right? The people... His priest was going to be out of Israel, right? So you got the Levites, which the Levites was a microcosm 
that the elect of Israel going to be the priests. He shall be a kingdom of priests unto me. But the Levites would be a precursor of that. But under Christ, we would be a kingdom of priests. That's talking about the elect of Israel. And the what? Promises. Now you got the promise of the kingdom, the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the resurrection unto eternal life, and so on and so forth. Whose are the fathers, right? Now he's point, he ain't disagreeing. Who's Israel's forefathers? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And of whom as concerning the flesh, why did Christ come in the flesh? Christ came, meaning that right there. You'd have to read this along with John 3.16 to give John 3.16 context. If you just read John 3.16 without these other references, it'll sound like he came for the whole world. But no, Christ came in the flesh for the sons and daughters of the Israelites, right? Of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that lineage. Who is over all, God bless forever, Amun. So he said all that, not to boast, but to actually make an indictment against them. You got this whole thing laid out for you. What are you missing? Not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So when he's saying the fourth verse, who are Israelites, not all Israel is this stuff going to pertain to because although you born Israel, the fact that you reject the Christ and refuse to repent, they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. That was his point. That was his point the whole time. If you make it about being born uh, of the flesh of Israel, right, of the lineage, that means nothing if you don't repent. And then he's going to use previous uh, situations where being a born of, of the seed or being born of the, yeah, being born of the seed didn't necessarily make you a child of God. Watch this. Seven verse. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Now we're talking nationality. Okay, he's being specific. Are they all children? It still doesn't make you an Israelite. Yeah, but I'm born Israel. Listen to what he's saying. Abraham had other children besides the lineage of Israel. So he's trying to, to appeal to them in a way to make sense to them. They knew that Abraham had more than one lineage. They also knew that Abraham had a chosen lineage while the other lineage was blocked out, disallowed from the covenant. You're talking you had Abraham had Ishmael first and then he had Isaac. So Paul had to use something they can relate to. If you just generalize, oh, I'm born, in, I'm born of Abraham. What does that mean? Ishmael can say that. So neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, meaning those of Abraham's lineage, these are not the children of God. That doesn't make you a child of God, just being born of Abraham. So just as Ishmael was disallowed from the covenant, an Israelite can be disallowed from the covenant, being born of Abraham, if he refuses to repent in Christ. This is what Paul was saying. You're no longer considered the seed. So it's bad news for a lot of these groups be on the corner. We got to repent. Stop following man. Stop promoting an elder when you're supposed to be defending Christ. Let's continue. But the children of the promise, see, there's a distinction made say, are counted for the seed. Just as Isaac was counted as the child of the promise, the elect of Israel is separated from the rest of Israel. The rest of Israel won't repent and acknowledge Christ. But those that received the Christ became the sons of God. Let's read. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. See, and so now he's quoting Genesis. To, to bring them to mind. Remember when Ishmael was disallowed and the Lord chose Isaac instead of Ishmael? And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, so the thing repeated. Now Isaac, who carried the lineage, 
being of Abraham, he had two sons. But it skipped over the firstborn and went to the child of the promise, Jacob. For the children being not yet born, meaning Jacob and Esau, neither having done any good or evil, meaning none did good or evil to be chosen. One did good, so he should be chosen. The other one did evil, so he should be not uh, not chosen. No, they weren't even born yet. So then what, when was the choice made? That the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand. Not of works, but of him that calleth. So it was already chosen and elected, using the wording, right? That the Most High chose Jacob over Esau. So then, if you understand the analogy Paul is making, this is funny. Brothers on the corner yelling, Paul is saying you could be that Edomite disallowed from the covenant by refusing Christ. They on the corner, read it again, brother. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. See that? God hates the white man. Right? Read it again, and the brothers in the back. That's right. And the whole time, verse by verse, this is an indictment against an Israelite who puts his elders first, he puts himself first, he puts Satan first, and he refuses to repent in Christ. And whatever he's putting first, he's calling that the truth when Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. These wicked leaders, they couldn't save Israel, but they were acting like they were the avenue to the Most High. And Israel was in fear of the, of, of the Sanhedrin. They were in fear of those guys, the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. And that's the intimidation and the bully tactics that be going on with a lot of these groups. So if you're in with any of these groups and you're hearing this video today or uh, some of this going out on an audio recording for the conference call, the Lord wants you to hear this. And some of you brothers and sisters are glad that you left these groups and the Lord have you to hear the word unadulterated. We're scripture only. Okay. And we're only going to preach with the, with the father had Christ to deliver to his apostles, which is the gospel. Okay. And the gospel is comprised of, if you want to get a short synopsis of it, he read the first few verses in Hebrews, the sixth chapter. You will see what, how Paul outlined about six different things what the gospel represents. It re re represents repentance from dead works. It represents faith towards God. It represents the resurrection unto eternal life. These are the things that's supposed to be taught. It involves the, uh, the laying on of hands, right? Meaning praying over people with anointing them in oil that the prayer of God might save the sick. It also involves uh, preaching the eternal judgment, meaning Christ's second coming. Preaching the resurrection, as Christ is risen, how are we supposed to rise, that the dead in Christ shall rise first. All of that. So how are these groups preaching nationality, reincarnation, virgin birth, prosperity doctrine, get you a Eve, get you, get you seven women, all these carnal things. And it'd be about rank, 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 officer of two million. First, I was on lettuce, but now I'm on fries. You know, foolishness. So let's read on. So what is Paul outlining? There were those of Abraham's lineage that were disallowed from the covenant because just being of Abraham didn't cut it. What cut it? Being chosen of God. And so he's making this analogy to the elect of, of Israel. That's who's going to be counted for the promise. So just understand, being an Israelite is not good enough, y'all. All right. So he said in the 12th verse, it was said unto her, meaning Rebekah, the elder, meaning the firstborn, shall serve the younger. He's not the inheritor. The younger is the inheritor. He's the heir. As it is written, now he's quoting another scripture. That's in Malachi. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So there is truth that the Most High when he created all creation, he has a nation he loves the most, and he has a nation that he despised the most, right? So now what is there to say? What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God to love one nation above another nation? God forbid. You see that? Okay, so 
the brothers love to read this, but they don't. I don't think they understand what Paul's statement w- was about. You're that Edomite, dude, that's rejecting Christ and putting Bishop Nathaniel above you, or Tahar from some GMS, right? Those are just two names for starters. What's the other guy out of GOCC? I forget his name. And a, a lot of brothers. You got self-proclaimed prophets just pop up and just and just be pulling scriptures and having their own group. And all I can say to this, because I'm not God, unless we repent in the name of Jesus Christ, get baptized in water under the power and authority of the Christ, right? And start putting on the Christ, we're not going to be counted as Israel. Now, that's a true statement. That is not fighting words. That's not something I chose to say. That's the Bible. That includes us. So we don't subscribe to any acronym name. We are brothers and sisters of the same nation, y'all. This foolishness needs to stop with these divisions. Okay. And so let's go to Isaiah. And then we'll talk about the divisions uh, in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. But you got a lot of, there's more in that chapter. I mean, that chapter, Romans 9, gets real good. But uh, let's head to um, Isaiah 65. We in Isaiah, right? And we want the 65th chapter. And let's skip down to about the 11th verse, right? Where it's prophetic of a separation amongst Israel being Israel that don't mean anything there's a separation now, I could have chose the parable Christ spoke about the sheep and the goats where he gonna gather and, and, and pretty much the Israelites that didn't understand the two great commandments the love of the father and the love of thy neighbors thyself they're gonna be considered the goats and the sheep there's the ones who visited their brother who who when they were in prison or when they were sick who gave them food, who gave them drink, who had genuine care. And the only way you could do that is hum- humility. First of all, the Holy Spirit. And humility and, and, and esteeming one another better than yourself. But that's not what these brothers do, and that's not what they teach the people that's part of the con- their so-called congregation. So-called because the sheep belong to Christ. They teach him to be rough and out of order, to be rude, to be disrespectful, to be cunning and slick and, and getting over and slanderous. Right? So Isaiah 65 and 11. But ye that, but ye are they that forsake the Lord. See what he had? See, the Lord didn't have too many nice things to say about our nation. That forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop and that furnish the drink offering unto that number so they were idolatrous. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I call, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. But did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. So that goes with Acts the 13th chapter, where Paul said, The scribes and Pharisees, the rulers of Israel, killed the Christ in ignorance, because here they reading the, the, the law and prophets every Sabbath day. And didn't see him as the Messiah. So that shows you people could have the Bible, reading it all the time, and still don't know what they talking about. That's what Paul was saying in a nice way, that here you got leaders of Israel pulling scriptures every Sabbath day and don't know what they saying. Because if they knew what they were saying, they would have never killed the Christ, even though Pilate was willing to let him go. That was what Paul said in Acts uh, 13. So let's read on. So this is the rebellious crew of Israel. That's what the Lord said. He done spoke and sent. uh, He done spoke by sending the prophets and mainly his Christ, his anointed. Israel don't listen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. See, there's a distinction made in Israel. He called the, the obedient group of Israel his servants. But the disobedient, you're going to be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Right? When are they going to truly be ashamed? At the second coming of Christ. Right? 
Behold, my, didn't that Christ said that parable? Now cast ye them, cast them out into outer darkness. They say, Lord, when was you sick and we didn't visit you? When was you um, in prison and we didn't visit you? When was you hungry and we didn't feed you? He said, when you didn't do it to the least of my brethren, you didn't do it to, unto me. Cast them into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, so it's it's amazing that a lot of these groups, they so bent on, you know, acquiring numbers in the group and and built, you know, setting up schools all over the place and didn't figure out none of them is in order. So you so, they so much in a hurry when we should be about repenting in Christ, man. I don't think they truly understand what that means because I keep the law, brother. You can't keep the law and break the law. So you can't keep a Sabbath, but whatever Bishop Nathaniel say is over what Christ say. Christ said you to be baptized in water, man. That's a commandment in Matthew 28. As also re repeated in Acts, the first chapter. It actually says in Acts, the first chapter, he dealt with them for 40 days and commanded them. So that story in Acts 1 is the same story in the end of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's the same event where he said you to preach repentance throughout all nations because Israel to be scattered in all nations. And you to baptize in water, and I'm going to baptize with that Holy Spirit not many days hence. You see? So he never told Peter, y'all going to baptize in the Spirit. That, that Christ is the only one that can baptize Israel with the Spirit. So these brothers are completely out of order. And, it, it, you know, it fits the scenario because when you reject Christ, you get a superficial version of the Bible. And that's why they're locked into their own world. A lot of these so-called leaders of Israel, they be legends in their own mind. Just like these scribes and Pharisees, they were in their own world until the Lord shut their world down in 70 AD. And that was the end of their claim to fame because they were trying to latch on to the things of the Most High, which is the temple, the Bible, everything. But they were in falsehood. So the Lord had the Romans to destroy the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD. Now, boast on that. They didn't have nothing to boast on. And they got destroyed. You see? So we have to repent. The Lord's separating his Israelites. So he said, Behold, in Isaiah 65, 14, Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto who? My chosen. See that? Now what do you name it? Oh, I'm this group, I'm that group, I'm this group. At the end of the day, your, whatever name you think you got, according to God, your name going to be left for a curse if it's unrepented. I'm not talking like to at people. I'm, tr I'm pleading to say what the Lord's saying. We got to repent, man. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. So they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Not all Israel going to hold the name. They're not going to represent the name because they weren't being Israel like they was made to be. They refused to serve the God of Israel. They refused to serve him through the Messiah he sent as an advocate for Israel to serve the true living God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's Israel's mediator and advocate to the Father. But we reject him when we're dealing in worldliness and, and promotion of man and foolishness, man. All right. That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. That's talking about the righteous elect. They don't swear by no group. What, brother, what camp you in? Oh, I'm down with such and such. Wrong. Don't ever come out your mouth with that. Don't ever do that. You were bought with a price. You belong to the Most High. Through Christ, man. Christ died on the cross for you. Not None of these brothers or none of these groups. People be scared of getting kicked out of the group. They're doing you a favor. So let's read. We're supposed to swear or live by the God of truth, man. Because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hid from mine eyes. So the Lord... 
For the repenting Israelite, he's going to bring us to the kingdom, which brings us to the next verse. For behold, I will cre I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. So what did he say about the ones who wasn't repenting? You're going to cry for sorrow of heart in that 14th verse and vexation of spirit. But the ones who understood what Israel represent, they're going to be counted in the kingdom to be Israel. That's the only Israel that's known to be Israel. The repenting Israelite that believed on the Most High through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And refused to follow doctrines of men. Medieval trash. When you got a doctrine where it's, everybody's black, what has that got to do with repentance, man? And then they think we stupid. Uh, some of us studied history. The people you talking about? Big time Masons and Freemasons and and into occults and secret societies with crosses and halos and all kinds of uh, underhanded, uh, how should we say, pagan Christianity. Yeah, but they black, though. What you, so why would you promote black pagans? Right? It's a mistake coming out of that UPK originally, uh, 1 West 125th Street, but certain offshoots of the group still love to promote the paganism. Okay, enough of that. So who's going to be rejoicing? The repenting Israelite who understood what Israel represent. One who was a disciple of the Christ, a Christian. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. So this was how the Lord going, like we read in Romans 9. The children of the promise going to be counted for the seed, but the rest of Israel that re that rejected the Christ, they ain't going to be counted as Israel. So Isaiah called it before Paul was even born. That's the spirit, you see. And so what did the Lord feel about these camps and these groups and these divisions? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. So we got to understand, I mean, a lot of people, and I was that young brother, are very intrigued to find out who we really are. And when you run into the information, you're very like, you're, you're excited. It's, it's, you see that it's concrete truth. Yeah, we the Israelites. But then you don't realize that they take advantage of your vulnerability because the devil will tell you one right thing only to use that as a, 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 a entryway or for you to lower your guard so that he can tell you 10 wrong things. And this is where you get religion. So a lot of people who don't subscribe by Israelite, they truly believe that Israelite is a religion. And they make mockery of brothers. You just had a fight in Kansas City, Missouri between two groups of brothers. The funny thing is the leaders of both groups are nowhere to be found. <laughs> so these brothers are not defending Christ. They think they are. They're defending the dogmatic, satanic, insidious, tricky uh, ways of what was imposed to them by their false leaders. And that's how they got into a fisticuffs and, and contention. And now you got Edomites making uh, mockery right? Edomites making mockery. And then you got our people who don't subscribe to uh, Israelite. And the funny thing, they're Israelite by nation. They just don't know it. You see? And so this is the stuff where Paul spoke about allowing the nations to blaspheme the name of God when they see the bad behavior of our people. Right? This is what you do when you do dumb things like that. They fighting over a corner spot in front of a library in Kansas City. <laughs> you know, one group start and start, you know, uh, starts problems, and then call the cops and pretend like they wasn't the ones who started the problem. It's ridiculous, man. So we heading to First Corinthians three. 
and we're coming upon the end of the class. But when you part of when you well not you but <laughs> perhaps you it depends because uh, we talk to a lot a large audience. Um, when I'll speak for myself, when I first was learning, I learned the color of Christ. I learned that we were Israelites. I learned um, that the Most High have deemed according to His covenants everything that's in Romans nine, nine and four. I should say that's what I was taught. That was like the easy way. That I mean, that was the first thing brothers love to teach us that. And it is scriptural, yes. However, the core that I had within me was always Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So can you imagine what's going to happen? Because Christ already said, my sheep know and hear my voice. And another voice they will not follow. So just give it some time. What do you think was going to happen? And here I am, I'm in the, in the school up in Harlem. I'm thinking everybody down with the scriptures. I found out quick, nah, they down for themselves. They down for lust and carnal pleasures and money and wickedness and hateful. Nobody was repenting. There was no new creature in Christ. They were still the same guttural, uh, uh, hateful, self-hating uh, brothers that use scriptures to attack people. And I, my spirit won't with all that. You understand? So I'm reading the scripture. I'm saying, yeah, there are scriptures where the Lord going to destroy the wicked of Israel. But here's the pride part. When you don't think that scripture applies to you. Then you do a double take and say, well, wait a second. Here's Paul who says, tells us in Titus, the third chapter, listen, man, we got to have a humility because we ourselves was also deceived, foolish, falling into diverse, uh, hurtful lusts and so on. You never heard that type of tone when I went uh, to that so-called Israelite uh, school in Harlem. So, you know, the brothers in Boston, we like, hey, we start following these scriptures and we caught a lot of flack, man. I'm talking 20 plus years of trouble dealing with brothers. And they still try to mess with us, but they take them slight side jabs and slander us because they figure people who wasn't there are people who don't know. And so the scriptures say he that uttered for slander is a fool. You ain't getting anywhere. So we don't really, we don't respond to that. We respond by staying in the scriptures. Because if somebody say, well, that brother Rum, he's a, he's a murderer, he's a thief, he, he, you know, he's a fornicator, like, let's, let's just play along. And then they meet the brother, right? I just use myself, but they meet us and they see what we stand for and what and our works. It starts to administer questions like, wait a second. And we've heard a lot of times people come up to man, y'all not the brothers that brothers made y'all out to be. And they, they come, they be fuddled. And we kind of chuckle and laugh because been there. We, we seen this coming. Christ warned us about these type of things. And he said, make sure that you rejoice in that day when you suffer persecution and tribulation in my name. But it'd be a lot of slander. Why? Because we stand up for the scriptures. And the whole time while we stand up for the scriptures, we doing like what Paul's doing in Romans 9. Right? Because Paul, the scriptures taught us that's how you're supposed to be. We ain't boasting like we do. The scriptures taught us. You want to have that sentiment for brothers that's lost, man. You want to tell them right from wrong. You'll never hear us on any video personal tax. Like, nah, when we come bring up brothers' names or organization, we going after what's wrong about the thing. We're rejecting Christ. We got to repent. We're promoting man. That's man idolatrous worship. At the end of this, only Israel, the, 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 the repenting Israelite is going to be counted as Israel. So the very scriptures brothers are reading, I hate to repeat myself, but these are the things that are condemning us if we don't repent in Christ. Okay, all right. And so 1 Corinthians 3, and I'll skim through it a little bit. So we in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, 
and first verse. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. So he, he, had a, he had something to say to the brothers at the church at Corinth, right? For ye are not, for ye are yet carnal. And what was his context in saying this? For whereas there is among you envying, right, jealousies, and strife, and divisions. What camp are you from, brother? I'm from such such camp. I'm from such such. So whatever beefs that the leader that leader has with the other leader, now all of a sudden you're supposed to inherit those beefs, and you don't even know the guy. That's to me. My my own father told me never get involved in that foolishness. <laughs> Before I truly understood the scriptures. Even in the world, I was told never be down with dumb stuff like that. <laughs> I'm friends with one guy, and now I'm supposed, supposed to hate the other guy. I tell the both of them, hey, we supposed to be brothers, man. So Paul said, y'all are being carnal, brother. When you have envy and strife and divisions, we wear purple, they wear blue, they wear black and silver, we wear green. It's ridiculous. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? I Meaning you're not walking spiritual like the children of God. You're walking like carnal men, people in the world. And what do they be saying? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? And here's the funny thing. They name dropping. Neither Paul nor Apollos was in agreement with what the brothers in Corinth was doing. <laughs> Right? Their names was being name dropped just like they do now. People use the name of Christ to come up with a camp. When Christ's building a church. <laughs> Not one camp. He's building a church. Singular. <laughs> what was the what was the name of Christ's camp? <laughs> it's ridiculous. So fifth verse. Who then is Paul? And who was Apollos? Right? So that show you they weren't about themselves. Who are we? That's what he said. But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. This is what we're taught. And this is what we promote to the people. I don't know about that other stuff. This is what's substantiating the scripture. Any man of God never promotes himself. He promotes the most high in Christ, brother. So Paul said, I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. We just ministers, man. Who's building Israel? The Most High God. The Lord don't need Paul or Apollos. He can use anybody else. He the one get an increase, man. So these brothers said, we got to push the truth to the highways and the byways. We got to repent. That's what we got to do. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth. We're nothing but God that giveth the increase. That's the tone we're supposed to take if we're real men of God. And that's the tone you're supposed to take as, as the congregation, the, 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 the saints. Don't ever get behind people that's promoting themselves. Don't ever be part of no group where Christ is an afterthought. Repentance is an afterthought. Everything else comes before that. Nah. That is not the truth. Never was. So when people say, I've been in the truth 12 years. You, you might want to look again. Christ is the truth, Israel. We talking to you, man. Not at you. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, meaning they speak the same thing. That's another indictment against a lot of these groups. Within their own group, guys be talking different doctrines. I seen that when I was at UPK in Harlem. This brother's teaching one thing, but then the other brother teaches another thing. One brother was teaching you can have more than one wife. The other brother was teaching you can know we're supposed to have one wife. It was out of order, man. And we young men in the middle. Can you think of how many sisters... That, that those doctrines affected because we caught in the middle not having the true understanding of the scriptures. That husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, man. 
If you truly love that, you won't be looking for no other woman, man. You too busy trying to learn how to love that woman you got. Like Christ loved the church. See? But that's over the head of a fornicator. So it says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, husbandry ye are God's building. So he, he's trying to build them up, but you got to, in other words, you got to gut the house before you can right, refurbish the house. So he was coming at certain things they were doing wrong in the church. Man, y'all need to cut them divisions out. You understand? How are you of Christ? Christ ain't never su subscribed to division, you see. So all we're saying, and we may have to come with a part three, is that you have a lot of brothers in Israel that don't understand what Israel means. They don't understand what it's supposed to represent. They're quick and they, they're no different from the Muslims, right? Which is, to me is hard to even, for so many reasons. And they are brothers as well because they're Israelites. They're just going by some tribe of Shabazz and all this other stuff. But they are brothers. You know, and they don't, they, they, they dip and dive and pick and choose what part of the Bible they're going to be part of. Our brothers that's in the Israelite, and, and I'm, I'm playing along because I keep saying, according to the scripture, Israelite is a nation. It's not a religion. It's the brothers that made it into subdivisions. And this is what makes this thing a, like ridiculous where we're objects of ridicule. Now, brother, you know, I'm just going to say now, but, you know, with that internet, you're getting a lot of mockery. You see, a lot of mockery. And it's sad. It doesn't affect us, but then it does because the Lord told us. <laughs> the Lord warned us as a people. It's his way or the highway. When we try to come up another way, right, let's end with this. Let's end with this. This is in Psalm 127. Actually, there's two of them. It's funny. I got Jeremiah before I got Psalms. So let me uh, uh, let me read this. Jeremiah 23. I know I said Psalms, but Jeremiah 23 and 21. Jeremiah 23 and 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Where in the Bible the Lord told his brother to start some IUIC? Or this other brother, some GMS? Or this third brother, some GOCC? Or another brother, Light of Zion? Or another brother, uh, uh, House of David? Listen to what the scriptures are saying. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Yahweh ben Yahweh. Who is this guy? The Lord ain't sent these men to that degree. This is where repentance is in store, Israel. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, but see the people hearing their words under the guise of so-called Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. Then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. That's the proof right there. If they're about the Most High in Christ, their group wouldn't be down with the evil. But it comes to, come to find out a lot of Sabbath breaking, a lot of fornication, a lot of idolatry, a lot of, like, hate. Just the way they talk to people. Christ never tried to convert a sinner the way they be talking. They be very condescending and very hateful. And right off the bat, you can tell if you don't agree, this is what you're going to get every day, all day. So why join the group? Why join the group if three months later you're going to run into something you ain't feeling, you ain't in agreement with, only get thrown out and say, you got kicked out the quote-unquote truth. You ain't, you want it, you got to be the truth for you to get kicked out the truth. <laughs> so it's a psychological thing where a lot of brothers are walking around thinking that 
they left the truth or got kicked out the truth. Nah, Christ is the truth. You ain't never left no truth. You ain't never got kicked out the truth. Matter of fact, the Lord had to let you see and catch lumps for yourself. Okay, now you're going to do it the way I told you. I never sent these brothers. What was you doing listening to them? The Most High told Peter, James, and John, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him, not these guys. You ain't supposed to hear us if we come in contrary. You're supposed to hear the Christ, Israel. All right, so Psalm 127. There's a lot of vanity, a lot of wasted energy. Brothers, <laughs> brothers and took time, money, and effort to, to promote these false groups. They got trademarks. They got books. They got ranking system. They got tests that you got to take. They got security at the door. They got money flowing. They got businesses. All for what? All of it's flammable. Christ is on his way, man. <laughs> your biggest asset is repentance. That's your biggest asset. Repentance for your soul, not these things of the world. All right, so Psalm 127, I went past this, sorry. And there's some key verses in there. The first verse. Except the Lord build the house... They labor in vain that built it. So what do you got in these groups? Vain labor. False foundation. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh but in vain. So what does that tell you? Everything that opposeth and exalteth itself against God shall come to naught. So don't be on the street corners yelling about the so-called European. We better look in the mirror. Because <laughs> according to prophecies, the non-Israelite nations, there's a, there's a remnant of them that's going to be with the righteous of Israel in the kingdom serving the true living God. Now that would be a shame that the non-Israelite nations are in the kingdom at a higher status than the than the disobedient Israelite. But see, it is a shame, and it is prophetic, and it's the truth. So we really need to take a step back, dial it down a, a thousand, and really analyze what are we following, man? You know, what are we following? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these groups, they be, they be projecting their their life's view onto young men. And these young brothers will have a woman and children and so have kids and family. And then, they'll, you know, they were better off not joining the group. The minute they join the group, what happens? They end up getting divorced with their woman. The woman take the kids and flee. Right? And where's these so-called leaders? Not a care in the world. Oh, she's Eve. Just get another one. Okay, so you just destroyed that man's three kids or four kids. He's an absent father because he, you're, so you told him the mother was Eve. Now, some brothers and sisters figured it out and said, man, we out of here. Ain't going to mess up my marriage off the whim of some crazy brother. And they out because it was never the truth. So they read scriptures. <laughs> they read scriptures like, he that loveth father, mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that love wife and, and husband more. Yeah, but that ain't talking about your group. It said me, the me is Christ, brother, not your group. But they so proud, they think they're Christ. And they quote the scriptures of Christ and try to apply it to their group and their doctrine. When Christ was saying these things in real time, never had anything to do with these acronym groups and their foolish doctrines. So if you're wondering why you're having marriage problems, because you're part of these crazy groups. You need to repent, apologize to your woman, and, 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 and get yourself right with the Most High in Christ. And go get your family. The heck with all this foolishness with these crazy brothers. Learn of Christ, man. Christ is, Christ is redeeming families, men, women, and children. And he's about loving, love and peace and, and looking out for one another. 
And with that love, he's going to bring wrath because say the Lord is a man of war. But he, he do it in a space of repentance because once that time is up, then he's going to bring the war against the disobedient. But don't ever let brothers take the scriptures of Christ like it belonged to their group. No, that's, that belonged to Christ. <laughs> we don't put our wife or daughter or son above Christ. But they use it. Don't put it above the group. You see the slick move there? So if you've been doing that, brothers and sisters, you got to repent. You got to repent. And we're going to pray for you. We'll pray for you right now. All right, so let's end in the prayer. My name's Brother Aram. I'm an elder in the church. I never planned to be, but that's what the Lord did. So I'm your brother first. I'm your brother first. That's the way it has to be. You understand? And so let's meditate in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahweh Shai, meaning Savior, bless us and heal us. Let your Holy Spirit be amongst us to redeem us and to reform us, to show us the ways that are pleasing unto you, that we may be brought out of darkness into your marvelous light. Guide us and forgive us our sins. Forgive us of our former sins of fornication and idolatry, murder and hatred, lies, deceit, carnality, and bless us with the fruits of your spirit, that we may have excess of the spirit. And let this prayer be heard not only for us, but for all thy saints scattered throughout the world. This we pray and believe in Christ's holy name, Yahweh Shai. Thank you, Amun. Now y'all feel good about that. And you stay in these scriptures. You stay in these scriptures. Don't worry about being part of no building and no group. You are the building. Okay, the, the kingdom of Israel is a people before us a place. And Christ said it in, in Corinthians 3 as well as in Corinthians 6. He used Paul to say it. He said, ye are the temple of the living God, man. He, he told Isaiah the same thing. In Isaiah 66, the Lord dwelleth in the man that's humble and contrite and tremble at his word. You worry about that. Don't worry about nothing else. You understand? All praises. You are Israelite and you're a disciple of the Christ. Now let's we got our work cut out. And that's putting off the old man, putting on the new, and become a new creature, born again of the water and of the spirit. That's right. All praises. And so we got classes every Sabbath, which is uh what they call so called Saturday. Is this truly the seventh day of the week? We be on the uh on the uh Facebook and on the YouTube. Uh we live stream. And you could catch us on the live stream um, Saturday mornings, 11.30 a.m., uh, Apostles Doctrine Boston, uh, for the YouTube, Apostles Doctrine Boston. Um, and uh, you got Israel Church. He'll be streaming on the YouTube for us. Uh, I think the brother Akeem, I forget what, he, uh, how, what tag he got for the YouTube. And on the Facebook, you got Israel Boston, Israel Boston which is the video you're looking at now if you're on the Facebook. And we on every Saturdays, Lord willing. Okay. All right. So peace and blessings unto you. Uh, we also got the church phone number. If you need to call, you got any questions, area code 508-468-9107. Again, 508-468-9107. And you can talk to one of the elders there. And get your questions answered. Uh, if we if we had the Lord give us the ability to answer, we don't have the answer. We don't make up scripture. We hold our peace. All right, all praises. And you already part of the Church of Christ. There's no membership, no secret Dakota ring. Just come on and learn the Word of God and be blessed. All praises. So shalom, meaning peace unto you.